Hello there. Welcome to another Monday live stream. How are you? Welcome, welcome. I hope you had a great week. Here we go for another one. This time uh, I ran across this really fun concept on uh, deviant art of all places. <laughs> and so I thought I'd give it a go. So uh, we'll see how far we get. How are you guys doing? What's up, Neil? What's up, Mark? Hello, hello. All right, now, I really, really like this body block out right here. And I was thinking about just really quickly just blocking it out for fun. I usually don't do full characters on these live streams, but at least I want to block the body out. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, how are you guys doing today? Hopefully well. Subdivide this a couple times and delete the lower. And I'm looking at this whole body as being this kind of elongated spherical shape. And then I'm going to, um, I'm just going to clip curve the bottom where the dress ends like this. And have her legs sticking out. <laughs> hey Mark, thanks. I think I want to go a little, a little lower with that. Get, get this, this quite narrow. Okay, and uh, I'm going to use move infinite because I want it to shoot all the way through. Northern Ireland. Hello, welcome. Hey Josh, how is the weather in Northern Ireland right now? And what time is it? <laughs> I love knowing that information. Okay. And I'm gonna use my appendage brush to just kind of pop some legs in there. love to check out or Northern Ireland or Ireland at all. These might stick together, but that's okay. What is, uh, it's not smooth infinite. It's move infinite. It, um, basically allows you to move the object all the way through it's it's like a projection move so it moves infinitely all the way through how you doing david welcome get some calves on there gonna bend that leg back a little bit Okay, and then little shoes, little feet. I'm gonna use the appendage brush again. Just kind of give her little feeties like this. Hey Paul, welcome. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful day. So for example, if I were just to use the move brush right here, it would only move this side of the object. But if I use move infinite, it will move both sides and all the way through the object. Hope that makes sense. Flatten that up a little bit. Just gonna curve these feet out. Hey Justin, how you doing? Where is moving? It's just in the in the brushes. 
just in the move brushes. If you push B, M, it looks like this. Move infinite depth right there. Is that the code BMN? <laughs> Every brush kind of has a code of uh, hotkeys. There we go, I'm liking that. Okay, now that we have this, let's go from the side and just kind of shape, shape the body a bit. So from the back, kind of want to push her back in like this. So it kind of gives her a bottom. And then move the front out like this. Hey, Tattoon, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Gonna give it that bodice shape. Maybe something like this. Yeah, that works. Um, and then it kind of gives her a place for her arms to rest. I want to glue. I use Dynamesh. Is there another way? Um, yeah, Paul, I call it stitch, like a sewing machine, machine stitching it together. Um, and yes, underneath the gizmo, there is remesh by union right here. And that will stitch your objects together without dynameshing. Okay. And I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Okay. Uh, why when I enlarge my model, I can't use the smooth afterwards? Are you meaning scale it up? Or what, or like go bigger in density, like higher in density? Or what exactly do you mean by enlarging? I, I assume you're meaning scaling it up. Um, so, and, and you can't smooth after that, make sure, uh, if you're using spotlight, like I am here, make sure that you have spotlight projection turned off. Otherwise your smooth brush will not work. So make sure that that, that, that happens often. Um, what's the use of a cavity map? Um, so a ca cavity will kind of gather um, either darkness on the valley in the valleys or lightness on the ridges. Um, it's typically used in texturing programs like Substance Painter, stuff like that, and it will help you like uh, do ambient occlusion or like um, weather weathered edges and things like that. Um, is this workflow of character creation the same for film and games? The main difference is that one uses UVs and the other is UVs, UDIMs. Um, kind of, kind of. Um, so there's more to it than that. Like games use normal maps. Film uses displacement maps. Um, film uses subdivision surfaces. Typically games do not. Um, but as far as creating a high resolution character, you can absolutely build things this way. Uh, 
Um, yeah, that's another option uh, Neil was suggesting is um, there's a there's a stronger smooth brush in ZBrush that ships with it. If you go to uh, comma, you open up your comma key and you go to brushes, there are these folders and there's a smooth brush folder right here. If you go in here, um, there's a smooth stronger. So you can also try that brush right there. Can you improve specular map with cavity map? Uh, yeah, that's not really, so mapping isn't really kind of a ZBrush thing. It's more of a, a finished texture thing, but um, yeah, it will totally, it will help your specular because you don't want specular to gather in the cr cracks and crevices of your, of your models, right? So it'll, it'll cut your specular down in those areas. Yeah, David, it's great. I like, I use it. I use it quite often. Okay, let me know. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, let me know if that, uh, if that helps, Mandy. Okay, let's see. I'm kind of uh, blocking her out in pose. I'm not going to cross her hands as much as it it is in the concept. Not yet, anyway. I just kind of want to get them into place. I want to make a character for my senior project like a mini scene. The workflow for my character is sculpting and then retopologizing the Navy. Uh, not necessarily, Paul. What are you trying to do with your scene? The only time you really need to do UVs, maps, and baking is if you're going to animate it or put it in a game engine of any sort or anything like that. Hey, look, Lori. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Okay. just needed to kind of know where this arm needed to attach. Why is it clear down there? Oh, because it's the same. You're animating it. Okay, so um, if you're animating characters, then yes, you would need to do, you would need to retopologize those characters, map them, bake them, uh, so they will deform properly. but you don't need to yeah like if you're going to 3d print it or just render it then you wouldn't Thank you, Neil. Yes, I give away my, my ZBrush brushes if you're interested, along with my user interface. And I teach some courses online to teach you how to sculpt characters like I do. Um, it's mainly a game uh, workflow, but it will work for anything. It will work for toys and film and television characters for the most part. But I teach you the full game pipeline all the way through. Hey there, welcome. Gonna drop this down a little bit. It works. Which one? Which worked? The the smooth brush or the turning off proje projection? <laughs> hey Jones, uh, for three D printing, do you prefer to lock in the pose from the beginning, or should we start with an A pose or T pose? That's completely up to you. Um, Sometimes it's easier to uh, do an A pose or a T pose if you want to pose it later on, uh, if you have a whole bunch of um, knickknacks. Oh, turning off projection, cool. Yeah, that a lot of people, that, that happens a lot. So I'm glad, glad to help. Um, but 
more often than not, I find myself sculpting in pose if I'm gonna do it for 3D printing because it's just easier. And it also adds a lot of life to the character because um, you get some asymmetry and things like that. And uh, like, like I'm, I'm posing her hands pretty close to what the concept is because um, I, I always think about 3D printing these characters and I'm, I'm, I've kind of moved away from uh, game characters and because I have 3D printers and I really like to do it. So it's a lot of fun. And for those, I'll, I'll, I'll typically take the T pose as far as I can though, that being said, before I push it into a pose. Just because you want to take advantage of using symmetry, you know? Okay. Let's take a look at this. And I'm just going to give her some hands, sphere hands. It's my nickname in high school, sphere hands. <laughs> Better to retopologize in UV and ZBrush with polygroups or do the retopologizing in UV and Maya. I would probably do it, if you're going to be animating it, I would probably do it in Maya. It will take a lot less time if you have access to it. How much would you say to a character cost a 3D print? It depends on the character, like 100%. Yeah, it really depends on the character. You know, I'm going to move these hands away and then kind of sculpt them out away from each other and then push them together. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to do the fingers or anything like that. I'm just kind of forming the paddles, you know, like hand. Looks like she's getting ready for a manicure, but <laughs> doing the, the general shape of them. Okay, let's see, they're kind of triangular. These don't look symmet symmetrical, so I'm going to do a mirror and weld. Turn off local symmetry. There we go. Do the same thing to this. There we go. Should be symmetrical. And that probably officially welded her legs together, but that's okay. <laughs> and if I were to 3D print her, I'd probably make her uh, legs a little thicker down here to support the weight. Just going to pull this away from this silhouette that's going on. I asked the company about a pose Spider Man that would fit in a 10 inch cube and was quoted 359 to 590. That sounds about right. Is it a, a solid resin print or is that hollowed? Ten inches is quite large for a print. How deep anatomy should be known for stylized characters as, as be, from a beginner perspective? Uh, well, it it helps a lot. Like it helps a great deal, but it's not entirely necessary because I'm if you look at this concept there's really not too much anatomy involved but there there is in just like the knowledge of the shape of the arms and the legs and how everything kind of goes together so um if you just follow a concept and get a whole bunch of reference that'll really help you but you don't you don't you're not a doctor so you don't need to know a whole bunch about anatomy but it helps a lot I still don't know the names of things. I should. Turn those. 
Hey, Sammy. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Sammy's a student of mine that often hangs out in the sculpt rooms in my Discord channel. Um, if you if you purchase the, the, the main 3D character workshop, you get access to my private Discord channel, and there are sculpt rooms in there where you can hang out and ask questions and sculpt with fellow students. It's quite fun. These look like uh, animal hooves or something. Um, really no different. I use both. Yep, it's whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, it, it, you could use any. I mean, there's so many, so many programs out there that do retopology. It, it doesn't doesn't really matter. Yep, it works. It would work for you. I also. I don't. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to talk too much about it because this is the official Maxon. Uh, live streaming channel, but um, if you go over there, I also have a, an add-on that would help you with retopology. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> okay. Let's get her head in there. Well, I kind of want to I don't know. Let's see. Do you pose in ZBrush? I'm using the plugin when I move part of the mesh is doing. Pro what what plugin are you using to pose with? I don't use a plugin. I just use masking and um, I use T pose mesh right here. T pose mesh, and so you. You basically hit T pose mesh, go to pose, and then um, pose everything, and then bring it back from by hitting this T pose sub T to bring it back. All that does is it takes everything and pushes it to the lowest subdivision level, and then it allows you to pose it with masking and the transpose tool or the gizmo, and then you just hit T pose sub T when you're done, and it it propagates all of those low resolution pieces to uh the high resolution mesh that's that's it and that's that's essentially how i posed every single character that i've ever done in zbrush in movie production for realistic vfx they use anatomy with muscles uh yeah it does it does use accurate anatomy for sure i mean as close as they can get it because they want realism right but for me, doing stylized characters, it's still it's still necessary. It's still something that you should pay attention to. Okay, let's get that head in there. Again, I'm going to use the, I think I'm going to use the appendage brush. I like the shape of this head. It's kind of like this reverse C shape. And I like how there's all these different nose options and hair options. Pretty nice, uh, nice design on this one. There we go. Okay, so this is another another kind of fun way to use uh, Move Infinite, is you can kind of bend shapes just by pushing through the object like this. I'm just using my fall off on my brush to set the distance of the fall off. So the, di uh, the circumference of how much it affects. Like a thumb thumb head. <laughs> What's up, thumb head? What'd you call me? 
Now, if I have something masked and I'm using topological masking, that's like two things and they fight against each other. Also, I'm masking when posing, but like if I mask the hand and move them, the elbow mesh starts to deform. It, yeah, you just need to mask it better, I guess. <laughs> Is make sure the the parts that you want to move are not masked. And the parts you do want to move are not masked. I know that sounds simple, but there's an art to it for sure. You know what? I think I'm just going to pull this. Because she just has this little chin sticking off of this, <laughs> off of the front of this. So I'm just going to use this thumb head and that's her head. Posing is a matter of um, hiding, showing, and masking, and then rotating. That's that's what posing is all about. And more forward. And make that go into her back like that. I'm trying to figure out how I can get it. Well, the collar kind of stops. So let's get a collar in there. Yeah, blend shapes. We usually use blend shapes. Game, game engines don't typically use blend shapes because they're too processor intensive. So um, I don't have that much experience with blend shapes because we would just rig everything with bones. Okay, so now that this is kind of blocked out, um, I'm gonna. Oh, I think I'm just gonna continue, but I want to give this this certain piece a little more geometry, and I'm gonna save it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that everything is masked off except for this head, I can take this uh, tessimation, that's what the slider is right here in my custom user interface, and just slide it slightly to the left, and it will flood fill this piece with geometry. And I can smooth it out a little bit, because it still keeps the facets when you do that. It's the best way to learn anatomy well not to toot my own horn but I have a whole module on just stylized anatomy in my course if you're interested in that so uh, my my website is 3d character workshop right here dot com 3d character workshop and uh, this is the main workshop or you can get it with everything else um, and if you log in, you'll see this is the main workshop right here. And then um, I have the stylized anatomy section that you can see right here. Um, so we, I have a whole video on how to break down a stylized anatomy. Um, so yeah, if you want to learn it through me, you can do that. I, I do cover both. That's a uh, male and female, and, right and talk about is, how everything flows very, into very each other. So, yeah. If you want to learn it from me, you can do that. Um, if you want to learn it for free, um, yeah, there's uh, there's stuff on YouTube and things that you can find. But there you go, uh, Revan. There's the link. Thanks, Neil. Okay, let's see here. Now that I have more geometry, I I really like this this weird nose that she's got on these four right here. I think the uh, original artist likes that too, like the same nose that's in her uh, full pose. 
I going to see the new Spider-Verse movie? Absolutely. I, I love the original one. It was, it's good stuff. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly make her collar just so we have it there. Um, use this topology brush. And I'm just going to draw it here. about there I love her head shape I've always wanted to make characters I have tried many other programs I've always had a difficult time with them is this going to be the one that I can learn as a beginner well a lot of people said that they didn't understand ZBrush until they learned it from me so I don't I don't again I don't mean to toot my own horn but there's over 2,000 students in there And a lot of them are here today, so I guess you can ask them. Speaking of which, hi Ian. <laughs> How are you? Okay, I'm just going to make this color like so. Um, yeah, it's kind of it, it is retopology, but not in the sense that it's not it's not typical retopology. It's using this um, this topology brush that allows you to draw it on the surface. I only use it for small parts and pieces like this, um, but I don't uh, I don't typically use it for a full character. It it just gets a little too uh, too spider webby, <laughs> I guess is the is a good way to put it. Actually, I, I have to agree with you there. I've I've tried it as well, and uh, it's the brushes don't behave the way I, I I'm used to over there. So, yeah, I tend to just stick stick around with this. Want to start freelance? Do you have tips? A good website to start? Um, yeah, uh, Fiverr is okay. Um, or like, what's that other one? Up Upwork, I think, is one. Um, just websites like that, and. Uh, but mainly I get mine from just um, just word of mouth and doing good jobs and but you st you still have to get your foot in the door somehow so a place like that would be good I haven't really used Fiverr myself but a lot of my students have and they they tend to like it okay Sounds good. Do you like working in the gaming industry? Um, yeah, so I teach full time now. I I only do a few freelance jobs here and there. Um, but yes, I, I do like working in the game industry a lot. It It can get hectic at times, you know, with overtime and whatnot. But, uh, but yeah, it's it's very it's a very fulfilling career choice. Okay. So now that we have this collar, we can uh, move it around and shape it more like the concept. Kind of bring her neckline down to be straight. Um, Paul, I don't know. Um, I'm sure I'm sure there'll be some form of that, but I don't know. Um, there's there's a lot less data. For. AI to mine in the 3D character creation field. There's a lot of renders out there, but there there aren't many uh, like models for data mining. Yeah, this is ZBrush. Pulling 
this collar out a little bit. Now, what you can do with these creases, and this is this uh, this custom menu also comes with my user interface. Um, if you download that on my website, it's free. Um, but you can you can get this, and if you go to this crease this crease level, you can see it's set to three. I can set it down to two, and then crank the subdivision levels up to three, and you'll see these edges get a little softer on this collar. I could even crank it up one more to four. It'll get even softer. So that's kind of how you can make a nice little collar like that. And then now that we have the collar, we can move this head to mask it off and just kind of move it down a little bit to match. I'm trying to keep everything smooth, but smooth but pointed. <laughs> okay. Oh goodness sakes. <clears throat> okay. Let's block in her facial features. Yeah, I'm liking the way she's looking so far. <laughs> Pretty fun. It's only been 38 minutes. And I just have to say, if if blockouts take you longer than it takes me, do not fret. Um, because a lot of people are like, hey, this is I'm so slow at this. Why is it taking me so long? And I just have to say that it's it's taking me it's taking me 30 minutes, right? But it's like 22 years and 30 minutes. <laughs> so that's the way I look at it. Now, I think I want to just block in that hair, that that like that big big hair up front. And I'm going to do it with a cylinder. I normally wouldn't do this, but I kind of want to do it this way. Hey, what's up, Eric? He scoped as a sprint. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So don't tire yourself out the first 5 minutes exactly. Like, why isn't it looking so good? As Ryan Kingsland puts it, um, it's the val you're going to be in the valley of the suck for a while. Okay, I blocked in this cylinder, but you can see it's the face in the wrong direction. So I'm going to rotate this to the side like this. Actually, to the other side because it's going to mirror from left to right. Okay, and then push it kind of in across the center line. So if I if I show the floor, show the floor. Where are you, floor? That's perspective. There we go. Uh, the floor is clear down here because my character is so big. If you follow this line up, you can kind of see where the center is, and I'm I'm pushing it past the center. Uh, so that when I when I mirror this thing, it's going to get mirrored across the center. So make sure local symmetry is turned off because it does uh, use local symmetry to do this. And then just hit mirror and weld. And then it will mirror that across the center. And now I have kind of this cylindrical shape. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, 22 years. But I, I've been sculpting in ZBrush for maybe seven. Make sure you turn symmetry back on. Uncrease that. Just kind of pull it down. I think I might separate this out into its own uh, subtool. Hey, what's up, Dennis? Welcome. Okay. I kind of squish it, stretch it, bend it, pull it, bop it. All right, 
possible to have a tutorial where you explain all your techniques in one or two videos? Uh, no. You figure out how to do it so we can follow along at ease, not like the evening. J no. Yeah, that's there's wait there's like there's a lifetime of stuff. I can't cover those in a couple videos. I wish. Yeah, 20 years in one video. If I could do that. Or two videos. Um I mean, so I have this other one called Sirloin. Here I'll show you. So if we go back to my website, oh goodness. Hold on a second. Beauty character workshop. Um this guy right here. This is a this is a character right here. Um that is uh I'll just show you right here. So this was a live stream that I did. Um if you can see right here, there's there are a lot a lot of videos. I go through the block out, making the accessories, like his sword, how to detail it, how to retopologize it. So here's a here's a full retopology. Um, how to do the UVs right here, how to bake the maps right here, and how to texture it in Substance Painter right here. That's 66 hours of, of content right there. So if you want the full game pipeline right here, this is a, this is a good one. But yeah, 66 hours of videos. I can't, I can't compress it down to two year, two videos. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's uh, insert a mesh. Just put an edge loop right here, so then I can I can subdivide it down. Just add dynamic smoothing. Hey, what's up, Wilberth? Yeah, <laughs> watch some of those. Um, yeah, it's 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 a it's kind of it's a lot. So um. It's best to watch it on like 1.5 speed or 1.75 speed. Okay, and I kind of want to bend it back. Like, Wonder what will happen. Well, I'm gonna mask off the center line, and then just gonna bend this back a little bit. <laughs> I challenge you. Yeah. Well, challenge with the impossible, maybe. <laughs> How do you deal with focal length perspective for printing? Um. Well. In real life, you get perspective for free. It's just sitting there, so you get you get it. It's you know. Um, so typically, what I'll do is uh, I will I'll scale it down to the size that it will be printed at, like this, and I'll turn on perspective and just kind of look at it. And typically, well, and I'll also turn the camera like this, so I'm looking down at it because most of the uh, 3D prints you're going to be holding in your hand, looking down at it. So make sure that your character is kind of look up at you a little bit um, and put more detail up top and less detail at the bottom. Uh, those are those are a couple couple tips for you. Um, Happy Extruder, how you doing? Loving the online course and the new setup. The ability to work at your own pace is very helpful. Oh, sweet. Very cool. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Now it's funny because usually I, I work out the face before I block out the entire body. <laughs> yeah. Am I planning to finish this today? I don't think I'll get there. Uh this is probably too much to finish in, in, in two hours, but we'll see how far I get.
Maybe, maybe if I wasn't live streaming, I could probably do it. Hey, Venro, how are you? I can't tell what that uh, that's a picture of. Looks like the girl from the office. Is that true? <laughs> that's a small thumbnail. You do these streams every Monday? Yes, I do. Yep. I think I have over 200 episodes. Okay. Go straight down. All right. I'm going to borrow this thing for the back. Um, do I animate? Uh, not not typically the ones that I do on these live streams, but I, 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 have, I have animated a lot of my characters, yes. I spent a lot of time working in ga the game industry. I worked at uh, Sony and Acclaim and Disney. as a modeler, an animator, and a rigger. Let's see, model groups. You might have a mind palace set up. I don't know what that means. Thanks Shane from these streams, I learned a lot. You're welcome. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. Okay, so this curl is behind her collar. Down quite a ways and sticking out quite a ways. So maybe like this. And then I want to make her collar higher. I really love this infinite move brush. Because I can move everything behind my brush. How does one take an idea and create it here? I don't quite understand the question. Are you talking about on this live stream or just in general? Costas. It's amazing. It has a lot of info. It also supported by an amazing community in Discord. It's a place to be if you want to be a stylized character artist. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate that. I'm going to steal that, Costas, if that's okay. Is it Costas or Costas? I apologize if I'm saying your name incorrectly. Stolen. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing to this and turn, well, I'm going to hit apply on dynamic and then delete it. So then it's pretty dense. And then I'm going to do the old 
polygon size thing to it. A little more dense. There we go. Okay. <laughs> this lady is funny. That's why I picked it. Costas Costas is like tomato tomato. Uh, which is easier? It depends on, um, it honestly 100% depends on your passion. Because when I would animate, I was passionate about animation. Um, but I would find myself going home after a day of animating and making models. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm spending all my time my free time modeling characters rather than animating maybe that's what i where my passion is right so i switched over to modeling and in turn it just i was better at it because i was more passionate about it so follow your follow your heart <laughs> I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to get that to look like it's rolling, like going down and rolling like a, like a sweet roll. Oh. <laughs> this haircut cracks me up. This this bowl. All right, I'm going to turn on Dynamesh for a minute. Maybe a little more dense than that. Is Wacom into us medium great for sculpting? Absolutely. Any anything with pressure is great. Just don't just don't sculpt with a mouse and you'll be great. Doesn't matter the brand, doesn't matter. Just whatever you can afford. Totally fine. It's got a little bow in her hair. Okay, that's interesting. Thanks for the fact, 3D. <laughs> Water is wet. I'm trying to get this to kind of bulge out. head in the back is quite shallow I'm afraid of using because I was great using my old tablet yeah just use whatever uh, whatever works for you honestly if, if it doesn't feel comfortable don't use it I know some some of my uh, friend artists have gone back to using tablets and gone away from using Cintiqs because they like it better and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. The tool doesn't make you a better artist. That's a secret. Okay, let's put our ears in. Turn on local symmetry so I can scale it locally if I need to. Then, let's see. Turn sculptress back on, but I want to go more dense. There we go. 
give myself enough geometry to push stuff around. And this is a fairly simple ear that I can tell. To create a character, can you sell it to someone for animation? Um, I Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey, Julie, how are you? Welcome. I mean, that's kind of what I did for a living for a while. But I was, I was employed full time. And that's exactly what I would do is make characters and they would pay me. But I've also done it for freelance too. So I'm just using the move brush and I'm just pushing it, pushing in this uh, dent that will make up the ear. A lot of people ask me like, what, what brushes do I use? Like the brush is the secret. And most of the time I just use move. That's the secret. Just push it around like you would uh, using your thumb with real clay. You just kind of push it around or your fingers. And get the shapes you want. It's not the brush. Like uh, Kung Fu Panda's dad says, there is no secret sauce. How do I isolate a subtool fast? Um, well, these are all, so if I hit uh, Shift F to show my wireframes, all of these meshes are on, on one subtool. And if I want to hide and show these separate meshes, you just hold Control plus Shift and tap on the surface. And it will hide everything except for that, that poly group. These are in the same poly group. So if I m mask this one off and hit Control w that will put this one in a new poly group. Um, but now if I do that, see it's isolated. And if I hold Control plus Shift again and click on it again, it will hide that thing and show the rest. So that's kind of how you do it there. Um, but as far as like changing subtools, you just hold down Control and tap on the, any surface of any tool. greatest challenge with sculpting is the cheeks. Do you remember your sculpt? The goatee sunglasses. I did that six times. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't remember. I've sculpted so many characters on here. It's hard. It's hard for me to keep track of all of them. Um, you just need to, you just need to sell the character file. Yeah, that I mean, if if they need to animate it, you need to sell them the, the character. Okay, I'm going to save this again. Yeah, same. Okay. Actually liking how this one's turning out. Um, I'm going to block in her chin. Let's turn off Sculptress for a minute. I do have to say sometimes it's it's uh, difficult just to be like forced to be creative. You know, usually it's on a job and they're just like, you know, you don't have the luxury of oh I'm I'm not feeling it today or, you know I I have I have sculptor's block or whatever. Sometimes you just gotta you just gotta do it anyway because you're being paid to do it. And here. I sculpt every Monday live on this channel and I just have to show up and I just do it, you know. Sometimes you're just forced to be creative and sometimes um, when you when you have a personality that is uh, you have a lot of procrastination <laughs> then it helps you to have a schedule and be and force yourself to kind of show up and do stuff, you know, and be creative. Okay, 
think I'm going to add some density to this. I'm just using Sculptress Pro with the, uh, the density cranked up a little bit. A lot of self-help folks say that motion creates state of mind, so just do the thing and the state of mind will change to what it needs to be. Couldn't, um, yeah, not, uh, those are some good words. True, true. My old roommate, um, my buddy Alan too, he's actually the, he's the lead game designer on uh, Hogwarts Legacy. You might have seen him in some videos. I, he used to be my roommate back in the day. And he used to say, um, well, I don't know where he found it, but he would say, do, do anything for 10 minutes. Anything you don't want to do, do it for at least 10 minutes. And more often than not, you'll end up continuing to do that thing that you didn't want to do in the first place, just because it's like a freight train. Getting started is the hardest part. After you get started, you'll gain momentum and you'll keep going. So if you can schedule yourself to show up and get stuff going, then it's much easier to get past that cycle of procrastination that so many of us fall into. Including myself. Atomic habits. Oh, two minute habit. Yeah, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. Just get started. Master the art of showing up. I have not heard of that one, but maybe that's where it's from. Okay, I want to split these eyeballs off. And then let's get this nose in here and see what it looks like. Very flat. I like it. Very cartoony. It's fun. Same principle though. Just get in the habit of putting on your running shoes. Actually, going for the run will happen, but if you never put on your running shoes, you'll never go. That's super true. Okay, it looks like her eyes, her eye, eyebrows are clear up here. So let's so let's put them up there. I'm gonna try to pinch this nose into place. Too much. I'm actually, gonna mask off the nose and the chin. So well, the nose, so I don't accidentally pinch it when I'm doing this. Pinch likes to pinch. <laughs> uh, what version of ZBrush do you recommend? Uh, 2022 or higher. or newer, whatever you want to say, 2022 or newer. I just learned something a couple weeks ago that if you ever want to see the quality of the surface of your object, um, like when you're doing stylized characters, you really want to, you, you should care about the quality of the surface. Um, and there's this matte cap Matte cap stands for material capture. And there's this one called, well, it's a standard material. I thought it was a matte cap. There's a standard material called normal RGB. And this is a, a world normal map. 
rather than a tangent normal map, which means that there's uh, it, it kind of mimics lighting from different directions in your scene. Like you can see like a green light is coming from the top down and an orange or whatever color this is, is coming in from the side and this green is coming in from this side. And um, so, but as you rotate, it's it, that lighting sticks and it really, really shows off the surface. So you can see the facets on this piece here and on here and here. And you, now I can see kind of this, see this weird whatever's happening right there that I need to smooth out. But it really shows me my surface quality. Yeah, map, map cap, map material capture. And it looks like when you have this, um, this material selected, it doesn't show you the, uh, the wireframe. See, I had wireframe turned on, but I couldn't see it. ZBrush Core, no, I wouldn't recommend ZBrush Core. I would if you're uh, if you're just getting started and you want to play with it to see if it's for you. It's a it's it's not a very big investment, so you can you can uh, buy that and try it. But I wouldn't recommend it if you're serious about it because it's just missing some features that are uh, that are pretty pretty prudent to the whole thing. Okay, so let's see if we can smooth this out, this weirdness. There we go. And also, um, well now we have to go back. I wish I could see my wireframe through this because I want to see how dense this is. The the sm well the lower the vertice count the easier it is to smooth so if i crank this up a little bit to make it less dense it's easier to smooth out this area well, plugins i don't use any plugins other than the ones that ship with it usually hey what's up leonard how are you i take that back i do use um i, I use dynamesh utility on occasion and I use, uh, Neil, what's that? What's the plugin that Francis made? It's like, uh, gosh dang. I, I, I used to use that all the time, but I haven't for a while. Remesh something by Francis Xavier. Those are the two, yeah. But I don't really use very many plugins. What do we got? 110? Okay. Doing okay. Um, I need to kind of see how her mouth is made. Finally found my next project. Easy Remesh. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Yeah, Easy Remesh. That's the other one. Okay. It's like a big lower lip shelf with a very small upper lip. I love that and this little chin. Okay. Man, I drank too much coffee. I might need a little break here in a minute. So what's your next project? Can you say? Or is there a is there a self uh NDA till you're <laughs> until you've gone a little further? making sure I'm at the same level here. So for this mouth, um, typically what I do is just use a pinch brush. I'm just kind of, well, let's use the detail brush to cut in where it is first. Okay. Very, uh, for the most part, very narrow mouth. Unless she's expressing, then it becomes larger. Building my version of a Kim Weber Disney. Oh, animation desk. Okay. 
nice. I've seen a few of those floating around for sale after after that big exodus thing, you know? That's that's good. That's cool. I'm trying to think of um someone around You in the Bay Area, Leonard, did you say? I'm trying to think of someone that I know that has one. All the people I know that have them are down in Florida. Your neighbor has one. Okay, got it. Perfect. So you can get all the measurements and everything off of that. Okay way down give myself a little bit more density there and just run pinch to the center area that live inside okay got it got it okay that's that's probably where I was confused so I'm I'm sure there I I would guess there would be a lot in the LA area. Okay, I'm going to use inflate. The sculpt is turned off. Just kind of inflate this closed a little bit. And deflate underneath the mouth or the lip here. I'll give that a little shadow. Do I know Dave? I don't know Dave Bossart. No, I don't. Is that your neighbor with the desk? I know like uh, Tom and Tony Bancroft and uh, Aaron Blaze, they all have them. I don't want to pull her mouth into her head more. This is always tricky because I don't want to break it. Okay. okay. Now I'm going to try and clean this up with pinch again. Now this is this is the reason why I love the track the trackball navigation so much and I'm not talking about a physical trackball mouse I'm talking about the default setting for ZBrush's navigation is trackball navigation and I know a lot of people will go and lock the Y axis so it it acts like Maya but this rotation is something that you cannot do in Maya and so um learn learn to embrace the trackball navigation at first when i first started learning zbrush i couldn't stand it it was like bazonkers to me but now that i've embraced it i use it and i wish every program had it trackball just means you can spin your model on on every axis rather than just the x and y or x and z i guess can you give us tips how you sculpt your set up your primi primitives? Do you Z remesh your spheres? Um, uh, so I made all my primitives. So I give away this brush for free, and it's just a bunch of there you go. It's just a bunch of primitives that I made in Maya, 
and I brought over here and made a brush out of them. And they're just, it's just a subdivided box, really, uh, because quad, quad meshes will subdivide much easier than meshes that, or, or spheres that have poles with triangles on each end. Um, and the, the spheres you can make inside of ZBrush, they, they don't actually, they look like they're made of triangular poles, but the tips, the poles are not welded. So they're actually quads. And I, I just don't like those as much as a subdivided sphere. It's called a, like a quad sphere is what they're called. Um, so I just have four different levels of quad spheres up there. And then I have two cubes, one normal and one that's been split. Uh, then I have a cylinder that has a cap that's made of quads as well. And then I just have a, an elongated sphere that's been tapered pretty much. And that's the last appendage brush. That's, that's all. They're not, they're not too crazy. That's one. He was at feature animation and he used to be John Lasseter's right. Oh, wow. That's awesome. My neighbor's John Ritha. Oh, I've heard that name. Former head of story at Feature. Okay, got it. Very cool. Just trying to make these corners very deep. There we go. Okay, I need to really quickly run and use the restroom. I'll be back in hopefully less than three minutes. Okay, here we go, race. I'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, let's see here. I'm gonna merge that chin in. Dave wrote a book on the Ken Weber Disney furniture. He also told me where and who to talk to to get copies of the blueprints. How awesome is that? And how to make mannequins like the one in Zizu? Uh, Yee, that's a that's a huge question that I <laughs> that I would have to do a demonstration on. I uh, I can't show you in a short amount of time. It would take a while. Sorry about that. I actually made a I made a lesson on that. I should just throw put it up on YouTube. Okay. Let's see, what do I want to do? I want to merge that chin in with the head. 
Oops. Using different sub tools. Okay, and then split them off. And then merge them together or stitch them together. Let's see. Where's my head? You got to turn off symmetry and then hit this uh, go to unmasked. Un it's hard to say. Unmasked mesh center. And then um, reset the gizmo, go into this gear. Click on Remesh by Union, and it will stitch the whole thing together. Hit Accept. Now turn Symmetry back on. Now these two items are stitched together. I mean, what you, no, I'm fascinated by those desks. I really, I, I always thought about doing, I had an old school animation desk that was made out of an architectural drafting table that had been um, refashioned to hold one of those discs with the you know with the peg bar at the bottom and um yeah i love that thing it was actually a it was like a a workshop light that had been flipped upside down and then the the top replaced by a drafting table and it worked it worked pretty well but alas i sold it i didn't use it enough So now that these are merged, I can just turn on dynamic topology and just, oh goodness, excuse me, and just have at it. So turn down the density a little bit, a little bit more. There we go. That'll just make things smoother, faster. Just gotta be careful not to get up into this lip area. You're gifted one of the animation discs. Well, you're halfway there already. That's awesome. Okay, I want this to go in to the head a little more than this. There we go. I don't like the roughness of this upper lip. So let's try and remedy that. Getting in really close and smoothing it out. So you can smooth without giant or without Sculptress Pro on as well. You just got to be careful. I don't want to smooth out my pinch, my pinched areas, just the in betweens. Modifying the dimensions and updating it to fit my Cintiq and computer. Yeah, that's so. That's what I was gonna say. Is I was thinking about in, um, like making one of those Disney desks, but put embedding a Cintiq into it. But um, I just felt like, well, if Wacom ever comes out with a new Cintiq and it's the wrong dimensions, then I'd be stuck with the one I had. Kind of a thing. I'd have to make it more uh, flexible to be able to swap out different kinds. Um, it would be nice to see how you make the mouth inside of the mouth cavity if you start. So, um, Jason, I, I typically don't, uh, sculpt out the mouth, mouth cavity during these live streams, but if I were, I would just open the mouth and just kind of push it in, you know, like I would mask that section out and push it in. You can watch some of my past live streams where I have made a mouth cavity before, um, and then if I were to retopologize it, I would just leave their mouth slightly open so you have access to their mouth, and then you can retopologize it from there. Um, but you just essentially just push it in. That's all I do. Your design takes that into consideration. Cool. Um, ZBrush free, good enough, or a paid monthly? Um, so I would do a paid monthly 
because that's the one you need if you're going to be doing freelance work. And just just the latest, uh, you don't have to get the Maxon One, just get the ZBrush subscription. You should be good. I usually merge my models in Dynamesh before I smooth out. Is that? Uh, yeah, that's that's the way I used to teach how to do things, but these days I I don't really use Dynamesh that much anymore, um, because I find that it 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 tends to melt my models more than I would like, so I tend to shy away from that. And yeah, but I used to I used to use uh, Dynamesh all the time. mouth cavity in the sunglasses goatee live stream there you go i don't think you can post a link on youtube or else i would ask you to okay this these lips are still lumpy i don't like them but oh well Difficult thing to recreate is the drawer pulls. Playing with either CNC machine or I have the foundry do sand castings. The original were extruded aluminum. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know where you would get those anymore. You'd think they'd be around though, you know? Okay, I'm going to give her some eyelids. And she has kind of this... this eye. I don't know if this is like makeup or... It's just kind of what it's supposed to represent around her eyes, but... I love how small her pupils are. Let's make her eyebrows really quick first. Episode 98. There you go. Yeah. That's a blast from the past. Look how stumpy these eyebrows are. Okay. For this, I just use the topology brush. You just draw a bunch of lines, and then wherever they intersect and make squares, that's where it will make your geometry. Then when you're ready, just tap on it and it will give it a thickness, the same thickness as your brush. Can realistic hair be generated in ZBrush? Yeah, you can use fiber mesh to do realistic hair. There we go, eyebrows. Best made in Florida are not the same. I, I kind of figured that since they probably didn't want to ship them all the way down there. I searched and I got hold of a company. Made them for Florida, they had a custom run. Oh wow. Okay, I'm just gonna zoom in so I can I drop and I put it behind all the text. Oh well, I'm just gonna eye drop across here. I'll put it back over here for a minute. I was just trying to get closer up on the colors. I'm gonna grab my paintbrush, hit fill, and the hair's a little darker. Thank 
character, but not a good idea to use a laptop. Uh, you can use a laptop, but, but if it's not high end, then yeah, it'll struggle. But that being said, I'll tell you this. One of my students, his name is George Zaki. He started out by using, uh, uh, he's, he's from Egypt. And he only had access to this really crappy laptop. And he, if you look him up, he has done some insane things with it. Um, he got really, really good at anatomy and really, really good at blocking out characters. And, uh, and, and he did some freelance on his own and he sells his block outs. And now he was able to afford to buy himself his own, his own computer that was fast and faster. So yeah, just, just do what you can with what you have is the biggest takeaway from that. That's not what I wanted to do. Concepts are great. It's really paved a way for me to have more control over working. Yeah, nice. Thanks. <laughs> Leonard, I bet. Oh, goodness. Okay. So with this dress I'm trying to decide how far I want to take it um I think I do want to split it into orange and red at least and fill this um Trying to remember, I want it to split, not slice, into two separate objects, but I think I'm going to have to uh, duplicate this. This is kind of looking not so good. <laughs> okay. I need to, I'm just going to knife cut it. Right here. Guess that did it. I want it to kind of go to the front like this a little bit. Okay. You know what I can do? Oops. Redo that. And I can split these into two different pieces by doing a split group or split. Yeah. Group split, why isn't it letting me? Probably because it's split hidden. Okay. Then group split. There we go. Okay, now this has a hole in the bottom and I can do fill hole or close holes like this. Which platform is best for freelancing? Uh, like what kind of platform? Are you talking about like Fiverr? Or are you talking about like program like ZBrush? Okay, I'm just going to remesh this using keep groups, detect edges. Um, turn this down to like a one. Z remesh it. In many cases, limitations can actually inspire creativity. What can I do with this? Yep, working in a box. Asking that question bring that, brings answers. When you have blue sky thinking, I can do absolutely anything. It can be overwhelming. Yeah, it's kind of that, uh, that white, looking at a white blank canvas syndrome, right? Oops, I wanted to keep that. These poly groups are dy dynamic. Nope, this is ZBrush. Imagine how it feels seeing your work on a big screen. I've never had my work on a big screen. So I'm, I used to work in games. But it's, it's, it's just as rewarding. Uh, those holes. Whoops. OK. 
Okay, here's the dress. Sweet. Okay. There we go. That was looking like something else there for a minute. <laughs> um. So of course it teaches you how to make it 3D printing ready and do you need a printer yourself to trial and error? Um, I recommend having your own printer because it helps out a lot, it helps you learn the process. Um, yes, I do teach 3D printing. I, I don't, I'm, I'm working on a course right now that teaches the entire process front to back, um, but I do talk about 3D printing in my course, but I don't teach it front to back yet. Okay. <laughs> it's sitting right there, Leonard. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, but that being said, one of my students is interested, I hopefully, in purchasing my form two, which will free up some space for me to put my Saturn up there. So I need I just need to box it and get it out of here. Sell it. I have a Saturn II that's still in the box because I have no room to set it up because I have two other printers and, and I just haven't had time. <laughs> that's my excuse. I haven't had time. Okay. Now I'm just going to run. I was, I was thinking about giving her um, eyelashes, but I think I'm just going to, or eyelids get paid by Maxon? I do not. I'm a volunteer here. And I, but I, I'm, yeah, I can't really give you an opinion about the business side of, of Maxon. Again, this is Maxon's official, uh, live stream. So I'm not going to get into that. Hopefully you can understand. Oops. I need to move the eyeballs. I think I am going to give her some, do I want to? Yeah, I'll give her some upper eyelids. Usually works out for the better. Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick to make some eyelids. But why does the channel name is, because they used to be Pixelogic and they got purchased by Maxon and you can't, Maxon already has their own YouTube channel. You can't just change this over to Maxon or merge it. So they just kept it for now. I don't know what they'll do with it in the future. Okay, so a little trick is I'm going to take this eyeball. I'm going to turn transparency on so I can see through the mesh. And now I can use my topology brush and I can draw across to make an eyelid like this. And then just everywhere you draw a square, it's going to make geometry. I don't have to make it super even or anything like that. And then I can just hold down Alt, drag on the surface, and it will clear all of the, the extra bits off of there. Okay. And yeah, I didn't finish. I could, I could probably do one more square here. Like that. There we go. Okay. And then um, it's, I can add thickness based off of my brush size. Then I just tap on the surface and it will make me a new piece of geometry. And then I will uh, do split unmass points, which will put it in its own sub tool. Whoops. And then I just arrow down, which will go down to the next sub sub tool in my list. <laughs> hey, what's up? Iroscopes. How you doing, man? Are you back? Back in town? Are you still away? Uh, Artist Arrow, yeah, it's okay. I've I've since um, broken up the 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 website into pieces, not website, the the course, workshop, whatever you want to call it, into smaller bit, more affordable bits. So if here, I'll just I'll just tell you about it really quick. You're back in town. Awesome. How was it? So if you go to my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com, this is the main course. 
there is some 3D printing stuff in here, but I don't go into depth with it. Okay. And here you get everything right here, um, including this is the, the 3D print character walkthrough right here. So, um, yeah, this is, this is the one that you would want to get. So this does not come with the original workshop unless you purchase the original workshop, but it does come with this bundle. Okay. Stories for days. All right, man. Yeah, we got to catch up. I got, I got lots too. <laughs> crazy, crazy. I saw uh, Paul Gabriel's pictures of Paris. That looked awesome. <laughs> Looks like the math teacher kept giving you his attention. Yep. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Ah, uh, thanks, Ian. I appreciate it. Okay. Got the eyelids going on. Okay, did I miss anything? Elegu and any cubic are making DLP. Remind me what DLP means again. <laughs> I I say uh resin printers or filament printers, and that's all I know. It's the Lino. Yes. Yep, yep. Artist arrow, yes. That as soon as I finish it, I'm taking that all the way to 3D printing whenever I finish it. I keep getting distracted. <laughs> I just need to get it done. Yeah, that's Josh Black's concept. Uh-huh. Uh oh, this one is not. No, this one. Remind me who this is again, Neil. <laughs> I can't remember. The the Lion O is Josh Black. Start a YouTube channel for your company. Nice. YouTube is a hard a hard road. <laughs> It's a resin printer, but it uses a projector instead of an LCD screen. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Isn't that what the Saturn II is or no? I thought so. that's what, or, or is that an LCD? Okay. How do you handle eye blinks? Do you have a separate piece for that one, anime? It completely depends on the, uh, the product that you're trying to make. So... Uh, sometimes I'll model in the eyelids and sometimes I'll make them a separate piece. Saturn Tunes LCD. Okay, I don't even know what it is that I got. <laughs> so if they're like a more puppety, cartoony eyelid, then I'll I'll make a whole uh, entire half of a sphere to, to blink um, or maybe two halves of a sphere, depending on the eyes. Um, but typically on a more realistic characters, I would stitch them in. And sometimes you can model them closed, but it just depends on the character. All right, let's get. Sorry, student. So do I have that? I mean, yeah, just look in your library. If you see Lionel, that's the th that's it. So you should, unless you've purchased it recently by itself, the course then you should have it if you're already a student. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, her eyelashes now with the same topology brush. Okay. Hey, Monero, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. So rinse and repeat. I'm just going to do the same kind of thing. Split unmasked points, arrow down, and then I can grab this color and fill it. There we go. Okay. 
and I don't want creased edges, so I'm going to uncrease all. And then I can edit some of these points. I want to move them further on down the line. Yeah, you have some crazy jet lag. Okay, for this, I'm going to actually use the modeler to make some lashes come off of here. Kind of, but not really. <laughs> okay, so to make these lashes, I want to extrude three of these out. Um, so I'm going to grab the Z modeler and hit extrude single poly. Just go one. Two, three. Jet lag's very real. I'd already be at the pub <laughs> day drinking. <laughs> okay, scale. That's funny. Oops, I need a local symmetry. That is on. Okay, what's going on? You know what? I think I'm just gonna do just gonna smooth it very, very lightly. Like this, there we go. That's what I wanted. Characters like Kung Fu Panda has brawl over it. How do I go about that? Uh, that's called uh, look dev. And that's a whole other thing. It's uh, it's it depends on the the film rendering engine, and it it's it's more special effects related because it goes into fur sim and cloth sim and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's not my that's not what i do at all so i don't know that i can speak to it very well okay extrude these out again whoops extrude these out again yeah look for training on look dev is what it's called And look dev is just short for look development. And they specialize in hair, fur, textures, clothing, all that stuff. Making the models look good. Eight hours difference, it was really easy to adjust. Oh. That's nice. Did I say nice? That's nice. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put our teeny little pupils in here. Our hilarious little pupils. Split unmass points. Yeah, this one's turned out pretty fun. Oops. Didn't mean to. There we go. <laughs> okay, let's get some. Let's get some red on our face. That always. It's always fun to warm them up that way. Coming up to 9 p.m. in the UK, so it'll be coming up to 10 p.m. in Europe now. Ah. I didn't know it was that late there, you know, right now. Okay, yeah, it's a little too much. I do want her nose that color. her ears some kind of fake subsurface scattering on these UK 
you last week started my trip to Germany the week before you've been a world traveler how was Germany I thought you were just in France that's cool that's awesome someday dude someday Time difference is weird, same with sunset, yeah. I got a buddy that lives in Germany. He loves it. Gotta get her lips colored. Okay, I wanna give her kind of a... I wanna try a blue around her eyes and see what that, what that looks like. Kind of a musty blue, but don't know if that's gonna just look weird or what. Yeah. It's kind of okay. In my life since I never left the country. That's I that's me, dude. I, I was in the military for a while and I went to Guam, which is halfway around the world. But since it's US owned, it's like the same as the US. There's like pizza huts and stuff. So I don't I don't really count it. I'll light this up a little bit. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna color these lips. Color the lips. So I'm gonna grab that color pink. Super red, man. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, let's get in here and see what damage we can do. This is still, this is vertex coloring. Whoops. Um, so it's a little jiggy jaggy, but it's pinched near the edges. So I can get sort of a good straight line along the edge, border edge, but it's not, perfect by any means and I can blur it by turning off uh, Z add and just leaving on RGB and I can just blur it out a little bit and then the top lip I usually like to go darker with it just to kind of emphasize the that it's the upper lip and it's got a shadow And I'll usually like stop the lower lip just short of the edge here and I'll take the upper lip all the way to the corner but again as you can see it's pretty pretty jiggy jaggy and again I can just kind of smooth it out a little bit there we go Let's see how that looks <laughs> not bad um, I guess sculpting needs a lot of patience and time. Yes. My mood affects my sculpt a lot. It does. You know, when I was, I used to work on Disney Infinity and I would have to sculpt characters from different film franchises like the Pirates of the Caribbean and stuff. And I would always like listen to the soundtrack of the film or the character I was working on. You're stationed in Guam in the 80s. Wow, Mike, that's awesome. I was in the Seabees, so the Navy Seabees, if you know what that is. Um, they have a base there, very, very small. And uh, so I, I went there with the, with the Seabees for two, two weeks. I was a reservist. It was a good experience, a lot of fun. I'm trying to decide if I want to put this in there or not. Maybe just super subtly, subtle. I usually don't like putting these in, but maybe just enough to 
catch the light just a little bit. The sculpting needs a lot of patience. Oh yeah, I read that. <laughs> okay. I went, I was in from 90 to 98. And I was just a, a mud skipper. <laughs> okay, I didn't give her glasses, but we're just about out of time. So I think we're going to stop pretty much here. I can give her, give her the little pearl, pearl earrings. I'm just going to grab this color here. Charlie, thank you. What branch were you in, Mike? Split and mess points. Been great, thank you. I think it means a lot. Oops, narrow down, forgot that part. CB, yep. It was a lot of fun. I don't know if I'd do it again these days, but back then it was great. Thanks, Julie. I'm from my Nigeria. Hello from Nigeria. We don't have 3D sculptors here. Big market untouched. Yep. All Marines. Nice. Okay, well, this is this is how <laughs> It was fun blocking out her whole body for this. Um, yeah. Station on Nav. Cam's West Pack. Ah, I see. Want to see the side view? Sure. There you go. Mm. Yeah, her body's just blocked out for the most part. Two. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it, um, especially those who stuck stuck with me through the <laughs> the, the break and stuff. I, I really appreciate it. So yeah, this was a good a good concept, a lot of fun. So um, anyway, you guys have a wonderful week, and I will see you all next Monday. And as usual, I give away my brushes and my user interface and my ruler file that helps you 3D print characters all for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Check it out over there. And I also teach online workshops, full all-inclusive workshops that take you all the way from nothing beginner to advanced 3D character, game character, 3D print. So uh, check it out. Um, have a wonderful week, guys. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.